and I'm assuming the attention you used to get on GS was far more than this. I, I'll give you an example of my own society only. Like when I had a Tiger, nobody even asked me what kind of bike is this. Like only few people who are into bikes and all they know. But rest all building when I got my GS310 with a BMW dash and they all were like, wow, what a bike you've got. Like how fast could you cruise on the GS without screening the engine? So you owned a BMW GS310 before this amazing machine. So tell us more about your experience. And I, if I'm not mistaken, you sold it off like in 5,000 kilometers itself, right? So was it a personal reason or was it because of the GS? Yeah, no, I got I sold the GS last year. Hmm. That was because of my personal health issue. Okay. So in between, I stopped uh, biking for at least three four months. Okay. Uh, that's the only issue I. Because of that, I sold my GS. But about the bike, it was a very good machine. Mm -hmm. I took it uh, more for off-roading than on-road and it performed brilliantly. Like, it was a very good machine to do off-road. So, if I'm not mistaken, you competed with the Xpulses and the Impulses. Like you really thrashed it, you really used it as a GS. So, I wouldn't say I compete with them, but I used to go with them. And uh, yeah, those guys were faster in some places because it's a light machine, of course. But GS was not that like easy. It was like almost at par with it. GS is like 15 20 kg max, like heavier than the X Pulse. Yeah, the X Pulse yeah. is 150 55, the GS is 165. I think GS is just 10 kg heavier. So, for that 10 kg uh, weight difference, you are getting almost twice the power. So, I'm assuming that really benefits it. It benefits, but of course, even a 1 kg heavier on off road is like matters. A, a, it matters. matters a lot. Right? And plus, uh, you don't want to drop GS. In fact, you can drop. Ah, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. The yeah. maintenance of GS is quite expensive. Yes, yes. More than this? <laughs> yeah, much more than this as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just got the 7,000 versus 3,000. <laughs> Coming to that. Yeah. Okay. So, so maintenance <coughs> in general is expensive. Maintenance is expensive. Help us with your maintenance nightmares or. It may not be a nightmare, but just heavy pocket maintenance. It is a heavy pocket maintenance, even in terms of like, suppose if you go off road, if mm. you drop the bike, mm. or even after having all the protection, you might have some damage on the bike. You know? mm. So, even the minor damage is expensive to maintain on a GS. Especially for a 310cc bike. Especially for a 310cc bike. Especially yeah. since it's basically a TBS with a BMW badge. I, I wouldn't disagree to that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Let, let's assume you've kept your BMW Prestine, you haven't dropped it. What's the service cost? Something you can't escape. Uh, the first service cost, as I mentioned earlier, it was around 7,000. Then it just went up like 7,000. What is the service, service cost of this? This 500cc machine? 3,400 to be precise for the first service. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry 3,400? Yeah. Are you joking? No, I can show you the bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in the first year, Welcome to Honda guys. Welcome to Honda. Pani chahi, pani. Ah. <laughs> Mera pani nikal gai, there are price will Okay, so 10,000 km GS was, uh, service cost was around, if I remember correctly, it was around 15,000. 15,000? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Around 15,000, yeah. And what is the cost of your uh, Tiger A service? First, second, third service? I only remember the first service. The first service was around 6,500. Okay. Later on, uh, I don't remember because it was almost like three years back, not three four But years it was cheaper than the three ten cc GS. Uh, yeah, it was around two three thousand cheaper than the GS three ten. Okay, so it's it's cheaper to maintain a Tiger eight hundred than a <laughs> TBS BMW GS. So I think that is something that BMW has to work on. They said that it'll be reducing cost of the BS six, right? And the overall cost also came down. But I don't know about the service. People purchase, but they haven't. They've got the uh, product price down, yeah. but the maintenance yeah. exorbitant. The purchase price of this bike is exorbitant, but the uh, maintenance is cheap. So, you kind of got to figure that out. I think uh, the labor cost is quite high for uh, GS because uh, somebody told me that the lever, if it is damaged, the clutch lever, uh, the lever cost is around 1500 to 2000 rupees. I'm not sure, but to put that lever is around three, three and a half thousand. What? Yeah. So, that's, that's what the expensive thing about the labor. So, uh, they probably the parts are cheaper. But they're giving the same labor as what they charge for a GS well, 1250. That's correct. If I'm not mistaken, just spraying uh, the chain is 1700. I've seen that on one of the YouTube 
I mean, our triumph, I think, so it was around eight hundred bucks, eight fifty thousand bucks worth chain key. Chain lubricant. Yeah. No, that was with the wash. With the wash. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I remember that very clearly because I was very happy. I was. I never used to do chain lubrication on Tiger because I used, uh, the service center is uh, next to my house. It was hmm. five minutes. So with wash and chain lubrication, it was seven fifty eight hundred. Okay. <laughs> so uh, coming back to the GS. Yeah. The Apart from the maintenance <coughs> part, the, what about the fuel efficiency? Fuel efficiency. Uh, so some people got a range of 25 kmph. That's but I never, horrible. I never got it more than 20. But that's because of your riding. Uh, yeah, because I used to rev a little bit more than the normal people do. Like but still 20 is less. How much used to get on the Tiger? Uh, 22, 24. So 800 cc giving you more than three. Oh yeah, so the Tiger is more fuel efficient. If you ride it, I know you. You have ridden the Tiger. Or equally aggressively, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done aggressive riding on both the bikes. The Tiger, I did uh, high speeds also on Tiger as well as on GX, which we can't mention. Basically. We were together. <laughs> uh, we have the video for that. But you still got 22 car average yeah, yeah, in but, general. In general, average 22 on Tiger and uh, roughly around 20 on GX. Wow, damn. So this is my experience. And uh, the you feel the suspension of <coughs> the. Honda is better than the GS as well, right? In terms uh, of clutch nature. Yeah, it's just only uh, these car, not much. Okay, but the suspension is pretty decent. Yeah, it's decent. Like the and these are not even upside down forks, and they're still pretty decent. Yeah, yes, suspension was amazing in off road. Uh, on road, it is like al- almost same, but off road GS was. Uh, but different. like the Himalayan, was it spongy on road? I mean, did you feel as if you're just. Uh, on a bouncing GS? around? No, no, no. It was still. It was. It was plush. It was oh. like a smooth ride. Uh, you so don't have a problem. Full marks for the suspension. Yeah, full marks for the suspension. And and braking. And braking. Yeah. And with reference to the strength of the alloys, since you really went off roading, yeah. no bends in the no alloys. No bends. Nothing. It's uh, amazing uh, alloy wheels. Uh, okay. You can take it anywhere. <laughs> you can take it anywhere, any any time. So BMW and TVS, thumbs up for the build quality. Yeah, I mean, they have fair enough. Some saving grace, right? Okay. So GS also I brought it because it, after the price point was dropped, it makes sense to buy GS because yeah, it was cheaper than the KTM. Yeah, so like, yeah. So basically, when initially GS came, the pricing was ridiculous. I think it was more than a four lakh rupee bike for a three. Yes, yes. So uh, when they came up with a discount and that's with the GS six engine, that was a good price. And LED light. And LED light. Yeah. And I'm assuming the attention you used to get on the GS was far more than this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give you an example of my own society only. Like when I had a mm. Tiger, nobody even asked me what kind of bike is this. Like only few people who are into bikes and all they know. Mm. But rest all building when I got my GS 310 with a BMW badge, and they all were like, "Wow, what a bike you've got!" Like, brand, BMW. <laughs> yeah. brand, 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 brand. And after the BMW, you got a Honda, which is basically unicorn brand. Did you get any bow for this? No, bike? not even a single person asked me. I am calling people. Look, I've got a Honda. <laughs> oh, it's like a big unicorn over here. Yeah. But that's okay with me because I like like we were talking about. You don't want any you don't want attention. Attention, like you know, uh, kids they want to come and sit on the bike if they find it fancy and all. Hmm. And there is a chance they might drop it or not. So you are yeah. always scared of all this thing. And it's a BMW. You don't want to drop. You it. don't want to drop it. Well, let's drop your Tiger, but not the BMW. <laughs> I would not prefer to drop any. Either bike. of the bikes. Eh? Worst case scenario, out of those three bikes, the Tiger is the cheapest to own. Honda. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, actually. <laughs> In terms of drivability and tractability, also, I'm assuming on the BMW on the six gear, how low you could ride without the engine knocking? No, it uh, it would. Uh, it's not that great uh, on a higher RPM. Like if you want to drive slow, mm. you have to be going down on the gear. It's not like Honda or. Uh, Tiger. Oh, so I will say Honda and Tiger had a kind of a similar engine hmm. because uh, you can ride at. Uh, the torque was very wide. Yeah. You could yeah, yeah, spread yeah. the gears out across the right. entire speed range. And obviously there are multiple cylinders also, right? Yeah. It, it helps. Uh, yeah, it helps. Uh, but like on the sixth gear, yeah. how low can you ride without the engine knocking on a BMW? Uh, if I remember correctly, it will be around sixty. Less than sixty till sixty fifty five, it will start knocking. Okay, so it's not that bad. Not that bad. Not that not good, good, but yeah. definitely better than the KTM. Ah, anytime, anytime, anytime better than yeah, that. Yeah. Like if you have to choose, if I have to choose between a KTM and a BMW, I still go for BMW. Anytime, 
it was it's a very nice machine it's a, apart from the maintenance and the cost and everything it's a very good machine and where are the service centers located in bombay i mean if i buy a bmw in thane yeah. will i have to travel all the no there is a service station which opened up last year in thane as well for bmw okay yeah for the bikes for the bikes yeah and the other one is opening in kalina the showroom is also shifted to kalina that is the old, the old mercedes showroom now has become the bmw showroom yeah. So they put Mini Cooper and uh, the BMW bikes are there. Okay. So, anything else that uh, uh, you'd like to talk about the BMW in terms of ownership? Would you recommend people purchase it, and what kind of people should purchase it? So, people looking to do uh, long distance traveling as well as you know a little bit of off roading. What? Thirty percent of off roading. Like, of course, when you go on an adventure trip, you don't want to drive on tarmac. Mm-hmm. You want a little bit of fun. You know, mm-hmm. more. that little little extra fun yeah it should be anywhere anywhere yeah. yeah so for them it is a good bike to buy better than ktm because uh, comfort wise gs is way better and if you are driving from bombay and all like you have to go long distance to go anywhere off roading also hmm. so you will be more on tarmac than on off road hmm. so i would say uh, if you want a comfortable bike and an easy bike to ride and hmm. uh, With amazing suspension and good braking, I I would definitely go for GS. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's a good off-road, on-road bike. It's a good compromise. It's a proper ADV bike. On on road. Yeah. How fast could you cruise on the GS without straining the engine? Like all day long, would it be one thirty, one forty, one fifty? No, you can't strain the engine more than one twenty on the GS. Because that's it. Yeah, one twenty is a comfortable speed where you won't have any vibrations and all. Anything above one twenty five, you start feeling little bit of vibration. For a short distance, if you want to go little higher, like around one forty, one fifty, you can. It's a capable motor, but then you feel that vibrations come down. So if you want to cruise comfortably without any stress on the engine, it is one ten, one twenty. So the V Storm two fifty will be able to cruise at one twenty, since it's got the same Suzuki two fifty cc engine. And that engine is smooth as. Exactly. I mean. Okay. I was assuming the BMW should be able to cruise at one thirty five, one forty, but uh, it can. But like he said, it will feel a little stressed out. So that it can't. You can do it, but there'll be a little vibe, a little like you know, stressiness of the engine coming up. The funny part is, I have got a chance to ride BS four and BS six together at the same day, hmm. and I feel BS four engine has some more power than BS six. <laughs> yeah, I, it's very surprising, but you can go faster on a BS four. Okay. Then BS6, but BS4 was more vibrant. You can feel yeah, more vibrant. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I I told you in the earlier video the they kind of smooth in the rough corners for yeah. the BS6. It right. feels a little more subtle bike. But right. then vibrations, BMW and BS4, you paid up to four lakh rupees. I think yeah. it was a loss loss it for the person. Yeah. Whatever purchase. Whatever said and done, at, uh, the price point what BMW is selling, hmm. I feel that's the best bike in market till date. You still want to recommend that? Yeah, I will hundred percent recommend. It. Okay. So if I want to do off roading on a good bike, it will be a GS rather than an Impel because I have ridden Impels also. Like my friend mm. gave it to me for a day. Mm. It's a good toy to you know do crazy stunts, mm. but uh, uh, you can't ride it uh, for a very long time. It's uncomfortable. Okay. okay. I I feel that way. It is uncomfortable. Even on off road. Yeah, it is uh, because yes. Uh, Can do anything what Impulse can. This guy found the Impulse uncomfortable. <laughs> This guy found the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's subjective. Yeah, it's subjective. It's my. We'll talk about that after the video, but okay. Okay, uh, fine. And um, what else? What else am I missing for this video? Anything? Else? You forgot that I'm holding it, and it's not on a gimbal. Apart from that, it's a gimbal. Broken man, use your hand. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice.